Before we get into scripting or uh, moving data around, I want to go quickly over a um, just point out some things about how networks work and uh, recognize that the, the description that I'm going to give here is a, a massive oversimplification and in some ways it's probably technically not a hundred percent correct if you were looking at it from a uh, position of a database administrator or, or, or places like that but uh, what I want to do is I want to give the principles about how networks work um, when you're using web pages that utilize scripts or databases uh, and so uh, we're going to take a look and here's a uh, an oversimplified diagram of uh, the internet and how it basically works so over here we've got our various devices that we can use when we are using a uh, a client uh, that we have our client which is our, our normally our web browser um, go to our router that allows us to go over the internet which comes to a router on the other end where the information uh, is actually housed that we're trying to access and the first thing that it comes to if you do an HTTP request is it comes to a web server and, and normally a web server and file server are the same server and what that does is it uh, takes HTTP requests which is as you know um, anything that's sent uh, over through a browser to HTTP colon slash slash and then a URL so that's an HTTP and that means hypertext transfer protocol so it comes to a, a web server because that's what will interpret that kind of uh, a request and it begins to look at what is the request that your client has made so this is this client server architecture in place and what it does is it looks at all of the resources that uh, have been requested from the document that you are trying to load and it kind of brings all those together and sends them back over the network uh, to your browser and that might include images it might include HTML documents it might include uh, scripts it might uh, include calls to databases and, and, and anything else that goes into uh, uh, an HTML document for instance there's going to be uh, links to CSS files and then it sends all those things back through the internet to your device and your browser compiles those or renders those various files together using the rules of HTML uh, so that it can display the page the way that it was intended to be seen it's not a single document that is sent back I think is the most important thing to understand is that it's a compilation of different uh, resources that come from this file server for sure but if you are doing scripts for instance if you're doing uh, ASP pages or if you're doing P, uh, PHP or Ruby on Rails um, normally it's going to have a application server associated with that web server and that application server is what is going to interpret the different scripts that are included in there so when we use jQuery or JavaScript or Sky, um, Spry or uh, PHP or any of these other kinds of scripts that are available in websites um, the web server will send those scripts to the application server the application server processes those and sends it back to the HTTP server now in some cases what it's doing is it's calling for data uh, so then there's also this connection to the database server in our case for this class we're going to use an application uh, server that does active server pages or ASP that could be PHP or cold fusion or Ruby on Rails or any other number of application servers similarly on the uh, database server um, we're going to be SQ using SQL or SQL as it's called SQL server which is uh, one of the most common types as well and what that does is whenever there is a call for data then it comes down to this server the server uh, provides the data back to the um, the HTTP server and that's sent back over the network to whatever device has requested it. now again that is a serious oversimplification of the process but it is the way that 
the client server model works where you have this web server that actually serves to pull resources from other servers now we have set up access to a uh, web server before uh, you've done it in this class when you set up your site you've set up access to the web server now uh, in our case we've set up um, we've associated that web server with an application server which is this ASP server so if you uh, run some kind of a script within your web pages it's going to know where to find this application server um, but that has already been set up you may have to in the future uh, set up that kind of connection so you would need to know how to do that the other thing that you have to do is when you're using a database you have got to tell this HTTP server what database you're using what um, what data in the, well, what database server you're using what database within that server and then you tell it what data within that so you have to establish a connection between this database server and the HTTP server and that's what we're going to uh, be looking at in this next series of um, videos because the way that you do that is a little bit different in each of the different software packages that we're going to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up the next uh, set of videos into uh, application specific videos that will show you how to set up your database connection for the software that you have available I'm not going to be able to do them all I will do videos for each of the softwares that I have available to me and that are current softwares that we uh, are likely to be using in our classes